federal government approves 90 billion naira for Hajj pilgrimage. Now, the federal government of Nigeria has recently come under fire for its recent decision to subsidize the 2024 Hajj with uh, the sum of 90 billion naira. Um, some uh, experts have slammed the decision, noting that spending such a humongous amount of money to subsidize the Hajj is a misplacement of priority. Representing the president at the flag off of the inaugural airlift for the 2024 Hajj exercise at the Sa Ahmadu Bello International Airport, Benin Kebi, last week Wednesday, Vice President Kashim Shetima disclosed that the president had indeed ordered the 90 billion naira subsidy for the 2024 Hajj. Uh, the, the VP said the pre president took this initiative given the economic situation of Nigeria, urging the intending pilgrims to pray for peace, unity, and progress in the country. Now, in separate interviews online, stakeholders uh, within the education and legal sectors have lambasted the federal government for the huge subsidy on religious pilgrimage, saying it reflects the government's gross insensitivity to the prevailing mass hunger, rising poverty, and wanton underdevelopment, inflicting education in the country. Let's not forget that the intervention for education, uh, as approved by the federal government, stands at 50 billion naira, while the subsidizing of Hajj pilgrimage is 90 billion naira. And this is why a lot of uh, stakeholders in the education sector are actually crying out over this. Mr. Zukama. The, the, the question is why should Hajj be subsidized? Because Hajj is not, it's a personal issue, like somebody going to church. It's like somebody, the Mecca is the ultimate mosque. So if somebody's going to mosque, or to the big mosque, to the ultimate mosque, why give him money to do that? Normally, Allah Hajis are the elite few, and they generally are supposed to be those who can afford this trip, uh, who can afford all the expenses associated with Hajj. Why give them money? But he goes to talk about the tendency in Nigeria of taking away basics from the masses to f give the, the, the elite luxuries, you know. Uh, 15 billion was uh, marked for the renovation of the vice president's residence. And another humongous amount of money, I don't really remember, was uh, for, I think, renovation of the Senate. If you look at the British Parliament, sometimes you see them on TV, footages of them on TV, <coughs> arguing. Mm -hmm. There's nothing beautiful about British Parliament. Nothing ornamental, nothing spectacular or glamorous. Mm -hmm. They sit so close to mm -hmm. each other mm -hmm. as though they need more space. And very rigid. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, and that place may have been there for the last 200 years. Nobody has rebuilt it. Mm -hmm. Nobody has put in so much money to renovate it. And they are efficient. They are functioning. They are doing their job. They are serving the people. In Nigeria, we keep renovating, we keep rebuilding. And then, uh, I read the 1999 Constitution. I think it was the best ever written. I paid very close attention to it. I read it very, very, very thoroughly. The rest of the Constitution I've not paid attention to. And then, in that Constitution, they talked about empowering the president, making him a very powerful man. So he can do his job effectively. One of them said with, uh, with uh, dispatch and something I don't really mm. remember. Okay, and people were arguing, no, the powers are too much for the executive. And others argued that the Senate and the House of Rep will be the sentinels of democracy. Mm. They will guide democracy. And in the process, make it that the president cannot abuse his office, his powers. But now we have to question, where is the Nigerian Senate? I, I believe that all these appropriations go through the Senate. Mm -hmm. Where is the Nigerian Senate? Where is the Nigerian House of Representatives? Because the people that supposedly elected you to serve them, to speak for them, are wasting away in hunger. They are wasting away in want. They are wasting away in deprivation. And you are allowing or appropriating this much money for trivial 
it is things that are most irrelevant. Hmm. So it, it adds to the question mark, there are too many question marks about Nigeria and the way things are done. Thank you, Mr. Zukama. All right, your thoughts, Chief of Force, on this uh, 90 billion naira for Hajj as approved by the federal government? You see, patience, let us not talk too much. You know, the, there's a proverb in my place that says I will interpret. You know, we have you see, I know what can be a kind of name like it's in Mola. What does what that means is that when a child continues to cry and points his hand to a particular place, mm. if his father is not there, his mm. mother is there. Mm. You see, that's where the priority of this government is. That's where the the, the, the government believe that they can't give their citizen subsidy on petrol. They can't give their, their citizen subsidy on electricity. They won't give their citizen subsidy on education. But they can give subsidy to people to go and pray. To go to Mecca. To go to another country, Jerusalem. And the subsidy is about dollar. Nobody is going to give you subsidy to go and do manufacturing. Manufacturers are crying every day. Patient, please permit me to mention this because it affects you and me. My wife went to market the other day and wanted to buy a common thing, morning fresh. Good morning fresh. Air freshener. Good morning fresh. Yes, air freshener. Okay. Is it air, the air freshener or oh, the liquid? The, to, the wash, liquid wash, that um, they used to wash dishes. Dishwashing liquid. Dishwashing liquid. Yeah. We bought 150 on Saturday, it was 1,500. The big bottle on Saturday was 2,200. Hmm. Nobody is giving, nobody cares about the manufacturers. Nobody cares about citizens. Prayer. I, from the day one that my mother took me to church, dedicated me, and I came out and they called me, say I'm a Christian. They say salvation is personal. Mm -hmm. I have never seen that salvation. If there is a prayer, if the uh, first person says, go and pray for the priests of the country. If there is any country in the world that have the number of monks and church we have, is Nigeria. In fact, we don't need to go anywhere to pray again in our lifetime. <laughs> if there is if prayer help people, if prayer help a nation, Nigeria is supposed to be far ahead of the United States. Of course. Nigeria is supposed to be far ahead of England. China. Supposed to be far ahead of Dubai. China, of course. <laughs> you see, the hypocrisy of leadership in Nigeria, it is glaring us, it's standing us in the face, mm. staring us in the face. A whooping 90 billion. Put 90 billion. Give subsidy of 90 billion naira to small businesses in this country. Genuinely. Genuinely. Give 90 billion to big three multinationals producing in this country. They will, they will create employment. The cost of living will fall. Inflation will not die. But you know, they don't want it. Because... The more richer they get and more poorer we get, the more inflation they become. Mm -hmm. The more they sit on our neck, the more they begin to say that, oh, look, I can detect what happens in the next election. I can detect who comes up because at the during election campaign, when I give you 5,000 naira, you will tell me for it, not knowing it's your money. This is the hypocrisy of leadership. And I think all women in Nigeria should stand against this kind of jamboree. Because a lot of people are benefiting from it. I, I, I have never heard in this in, in 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 the history of this in the whole world that Britain sent people to go and pray for the well-being of the country. The Prime Minister of Britain is an Indian. Yes. It's an Indian true and true. The father mother is an Indian. He only was born in oh, UK. Yeah. He has never traveled to his own country to go and observe whatever religious, whatever they are, they are doing, using British money. Mr. President, he just came from Riyadh. And I believe when he came from Riyadh, people that went with him went to pray. If people that went with them, Mr. President, to go and pray, do not pray for the well-being of Nigeria, and whether, whether that they, they are poor people that they are also happy. Because some people that I know in my area that are also come to make a and they are still begging for food. 
They sold their property to go to Mecca. Mm -hmm. That is the hypocrisy that we are seeing. That is hypocrisy. How, how can a, 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 a Nigerian politician who was who is so wicked and has dealt a blow on the Nigerian people who go to another foreign land to go and pray, and the God of that foreign land will listen to him and come and bless Nigeria? You see, at the end of the day, we are saying, oh, this is it. Allah, Mr. President, is going around. We want to start this uh, groundbreaking uh, estate for renewed hope. If you put that, so many Nigerians are homeless today. Today in Lagos, the, pe the homeless people in Lagos are more than the homeless who combined in a private state, Crossover State, Abia State, and and and, uh, and, uh, and Imo State put together in Lagos. Alone. People that are homeless in Lagos today. People that are homeless in Lagos today. You put nine, 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 90 billion naira on, on frivolities. Because God, do anybody buy God? Do you buy God? No. So why would the Nigerian government who came into power promise to help the poor, promise to help Nigerians, promise to help students after school get job? You are giving, see the problem I keep saying, uh, you are giving student loan. I hope those loans are not bank's loan. Because students will graduate and they will not see job. A student loan work in a place where when you get a loan, as soon as you come out, you get a job and start paying your loan. It is not called grant, it is called loan, Mr. President. So if you are continue in your four in your four, four year now, 1990 billion times four. That's what we are going to spend on pilgrimage every year. How much is that? That is the money that that is the money that I and you and me are paying from H eight hundred naira for per liter. Seven hundred naira for per liter. That's what you are using, giving to people to go and pray. For themselves, because they are not praying for this country. If you want this the, this country to be better, if you want the betterment of this country, Mr. President, you need to work for it. Thank you, Chief of Force. Thank you so much. You want to add any? Hey, well, pray, 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 pray. It's wonderful. You see, in China, for example, the Chinese religion or philosophy is uh, 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 me meta-ethical, not metaphysical. Mm -hmm. So we we they, we. We worry about the heavens opened and they saw God in his glory. There are three gods, all part of one. Those are metaphysics to the Chinese. <coughs> Don't worry about what God looks like. Don't worry about the heaven. Based on what you are seeing, mm. how do you live a good life with yeah. it? Metaphysical, okay? No, metaethical. That's why the Chinese call heaven God. Mm. This heaven where we sit in the our God. So it's about how do you connect mm. to the cosmic forces yeah. forget about those things you do not see so they don't pray like us they don't emphasize religion like us but they run marvelously well which is understandable because as i keep saying the first instruction divine instruction god gave to man was not go and fast and pray the first instruction god gave to man was to go there multiply dominate the earth that is really bend it to your will, multi uh, 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 <coughs> multiply, dominate the air. So it was a physical responsibility Unity. that God gave to us. So praying and fasting is to help us uphold this divine mission, mm. which is physical, not mm. spiritual. So praying is like eating. We eat so we can do our work. You pray. Food so is fuel for the body. Yeah, so, so you, you, you pray, spiritual fuel. For the body yeah. but we've left working and we are only praying which is like living working and only eating mm -hmm. you become a glutinous irresponsible human being so that's what the, mis the misinterpretation here so we have to cut down on our prayers <coughs> and take care of our responsibility hey, hello mr sukama <laughs> we don't let us know so says let, 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 okay. let us not <laughs> even cut let us not even cut down our prayers let people continue to pray mm. and use their own finances to finance their prayer yeah don't don't use the public good to finance prayer. Over the weekend, I, I read and I, I was I was I was amazed by the deception of prayer of tithing. A pastor said his wife used to tie with food. All of a sudden, they bought the back of rice and they be eating that back of rice and the back of the food to feed. If I were to <laughs> ask the pastor, is that back of rice still there? And do you still have it? You have you have been tied with money. 
as you a particular place you used to take your money and they keep going. Yes. You see, these are the problems that we have in this country. These are the problems. And the government are born into it. Unfortunately, the fanatics have found themselves into government. All right? If a few fanatics have not found themselves into government, a vice president of Nigeria cannot make that kind of pronouncement and the, com and the country is this calm. And the people are not on TV calling him out. Telling him. Who will call him? Where no, 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 no. What I'm saying is that 50 billion, Mr. Vice President. And 50 billion, 50 billion to student loan, 90 billion to you. How much, how much billion to your innovation? You see, these are the kind of wastage. Yeah. And that, we say, that, and we say that, that the and, National and, Assembly and cannot say. tolerate, should Mr. not tolerate Mr. Mr. one at a time. Yes. And somebody will say, pray for your country. Say good thing about your country. Mm. And your country is tearing from up down. And you are praying for your country. I have not seen a man whose son is involved in drugs and he goes praying. And the son is going around taking hard drugs. Going mad. And the man is praying. What you need to do for your son is to take a hold of your son, take your son to a rehab, counsel him, the prayer. Give him all the necessary support that you need to do. Tell him that, yes, when he is going to, when the drug is subside, he will like, at that point, he need it. He will want to go mad. Tell him, you are not going, in the next few minutes, you're going to be, be fine. fine. Yes. Cancel him. You see, this is what we have found ourselves mm. in Nigeria. <coughs> the moment this country is going to be good, if the country is going to be ever good, is when we don't have this kind of people in government. People that pay lip service to religion. Religion is personal. Religion, Jesus Christ didn't carry the entire truth to himself and say, since I am the son, I call myself the son of God, all of you must follow me. It is some people that seek crucify him. It is personal. The moment we carry religion, in, I don't know why they have not refused to have the minister of religion. If they can pay this kind of amount of money, to uh, pilgrimage. All right, thank you, Chief. They don't know that pilgrimage is tourism. Thank you, Chief, of course. It's tourism. You are enriching another country. All right, so the kind of uh, uh, emotions expressed at the table is similar to the opera on <coughs> social media. Actually, a whole lot of human rights lawyers, sorry, a lot of human rights lawyers have uh, come out, you know, to air their opinion on this uh, 90 billion naira approved by the federal government uh, to subsidize uh, Hajj. Um, a particular human rights leader says uh, the federal government's decision reflects both a constitutional and moral aberration as it is not the legal responsibility of a government to subsidize religious pilgrimage because it is a personal affair. Another human, human rights lawyer that goes by the name Belumi Olaja Ngbesi says, and I quote, the federal government subsidy of the cost of pilgrimage for this year's Hajj is illegal, unlawful, and unconstitutional. Section 10 of the 1999 Constitution of Nigeria, as amended, provides that the government of the Federation shall not adopt any religion as a state religion Using the literal rule of interpretation, it is clear that the lawmakers intended that the federal government or any of its 35 state govern governors must not take Islam, Christianity, African traditional religion, or any other religion as a state religion. So subsidizing pilgrimage for any religion is a violation of Section 10 of the Nigerian Constitution. Nigeria is a country of over 200 million people with different religious beliefs. So subsidizing pilgrims for Muslims and Christians, pilgrimage, I beg your pardon, is discriminatory to African traditional worshippers and uh, other, other Nigerians with other religious beliefs. It is also a violation of Section 42, Subsection 1 of the 1999 Constitution as amended.